I know that the subdivision surface NURB is on that tutorial by Dan Conrad on YouTube that I have linked to from Learning Suite, but he goes over it really, really quick. So I just wanted to show you a couple little bit more advanced things about other than the fact that I think on the video he just says it smooths things and smooths out a cube, uh, which is true. I mean, if we create a cube here and we put it inside of a subdivision surface object, now remember, if I just click the subdivision surface object, um, let me back up. If you click without clicking and holding on all of these menus that all have, see the little black triangle in the bottom right? If you click and hold on any of those, you'll get all of the options underneath. But if you just click once, you're gonna get the thing on top that's showing. So if I click once, oops, I didn't mean to click the extrude, I meant to click subdivision surface and then I can drag the cube inside or, and see how it rounds it out. I'm gonna undo that real quick and delete my subdivision surface. If you have an object that you know you want to put inside of a generator like subdivision surface, by the way, as you can see, this is uh, the subdivision surface NURB is one of those generators that takes a volumetric shape, not a spline. So we've got our cube selected. If I go over here to the subdivision surface button and I hold down option and click, it's going to automatically throw my cube inside of my subdivision surface. So that saves you some steps. Let's go to display real quick and just go to lines. Uh, that looks like a volleyball, but that's not necessarily what we want. I want a few more subdivisions in my subdivision surface. I'm going to come over here to my attributes menu. I'm already on the object tab. I'm going to change the subdivisions to four and four. Well, that's kind of a lot. Let's go with three and three. There we go. Now you can see there's two different kinds of subdivisions. It's the subdivisions that you see in the editor are under subdivision editor and the ones you actually render out are under renderer. The reason they do that is sometimes you might want a lower amount of subdivisions in your editor so it moves faster. The performance is better in the viewport but you want it to render out with lots of subdivisions, so that's why they give you the ability to separate those. Okay, what was I going to show you about this? I was going to show you that you can have compound shapes inside of a subdivision surface. You can edit. Here, let's uh, disable our subdivision surface by turning off the checkbox. If we change this cube, into a polygon object. Right now it is a parametric object, which you can tell by looking at these little orange things, which we can pull. And also over here under the attributes menu, we can see that there's lots of things we can still change about this. If we bake it or convert it or make it editable by hitting C on our keyboard or just by clicking this button right here, it is now a polygon object, which means that if we grab our polygon tool right here on the left, we can grab any of these faces and we can do things like stretch it out or shrink it. If I hit T here to scale down, we can do lots more with it now that it's a polygon object. For example, if I wanted to subdivide this face, I would right click. Oops, it's just off the screen here. Subdivide. You can also get subdivide by hitting the keys U and S on your screen. If I hit U, it brings up this menu. And if you look down there, you see that there is an S that says subdivide. Uh, what that does is basically give us five, uh, four more <laughs> subdivided polygons. Let's select one of those. Let's grab our selection object. And if we hold down control and pull up, we're going to get a nice little Utah shape there. Um, you'll notice that you're getting some weird triangles here on the remaining surfaces. That's just because there always has to be a line from every uh, vertex. It's kind of hard to explain and a little bit advanced, but you can't just have a non-square or non-triangular shape on these uh, remaining surfaces. Uh, that's something we'll talk about more in class. If I wanted to take this shape and I wanted to hold down command, uh, sorry, control, and drag out, I could do that. And then I could maybe go to scale and scale that down. Maybe let's not do scale, undo that. Let's pull out and let's rotate around here a little bit. Let's just pull on this face right here with my selection tool. Hold down, 
control. All right, so now we've got a little bit more compound shape that all started with one little square. Uh, one thing I suppose I should mention because it's so fun is if you do select a single face, you can control and pull it out to extrude it, but you can also go to what's called an inner extrude. I don't even know where inner extrude is up here, so I'm just gonna tell you that it's I. The letter I on your keyboard is going to let you extrude inner, and if I drag like that, see how it, it uh, creates a smaller square? I'm gonna pull that in. And now, if I hold down control and pull up on this arrow, I get a smaller square. This is a good way to create sort of mechanical and robotic shapes. If I do it one more time, hit I, scale in. I'm just dragging to the left with my mouse, by the way. Drag to the left with my mouse, and then hold down control, drag up. I can get lots of interesting geometric shapes. Okay, let us go back to modeling mode, to selection tool, or the move tool rather, and then turn back on our subdivision surface. We now have a very weird, hmm, it's kind of like a llama, some sort of animal shape. This looks, yeah, not sure what that looks like. Um, you can control the edges and how much subdivision, how much rounding happens if you grab your inner shape that's inside the subdivision surface and go to the edge tool. The edge tool and this selection, sorry, I keep saying selection, it's the move tool. And see how when I roll over the shape, you can see the original white outline of my shapes. If I turn off sub D, this is what I'm rolling over. Turn that back on. So if I want to say, for example, the edge of this cube, it's too bad that it's broken up because of all those subdivisions we did. I want to show you how I can select these lines um, I can take off a little bit of the subdivision weighting by a keyboard command, and that key is period on your keyboard. If I hold that down and I drag with my mouse left or right, I can reduce the amount of subdivision surface happening so I can control that. See how that is much less of a round corner than the rest of it. Again, period, hold down period and drag left to right. If I take it completely off, I get a hard edge like that, which enables you to make really interesting geometry and shapes. So that's it for subdivision surface.